everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I've got this really nice faceted gift bag that I've made and I love it. So I've just played around with some score lines and made a few extra folds and yeah, I've got this. So the top just opens up. I've put a little um, Velcro fastening there. They, this is my prototype. So this white piece in here you won't have and you can see it on the back there because I was planning, i show you, that you were going to close it like that I just didn't like it so actually I could cut that off but anyway so it will be like so and then you just open it up and look you've got a really nice size there it's the whole depth really really good size so this will work for any occasion um, yeah really good I put the handle on there as well again ignore that white bit and I've got all this lovely um, you will have a triangle patterned paper in here as well but even on the back there it's just lovely so really really like this one very easy to make so let me bring in everything that you're going to need so I'm doing black this time with this gorgeous paper which is from the same paper pack that I've used and that is from Craftsmith. It is an old pack, so apologies. I will see if I can find any sellers. Um, I bought it from a craft store here, so um, it was discontinued, and it's this one, and it is beautiful. My mum will be pleased because I got this for her when she visited, so she has the same pack. Um, but you've got lots of foiled papers in this one, and it is the same pack that I made that very large 12 by 12 fold flat gift bag, and it was with this one here, which was that big love kind of scrapbook page there so uh, yeah really really nice pack that one so sorry to rub it in <laughs> okay so you're going to need one piece of 12 by 12 cardstock okay so you're going to score it two and seven eighths of an inch and five and three quarters then rotate the cards so those two score lines are at the top and you're going to score at uh, two and seven eighths of an inch just down to the second score line so that's the first one it's the second one then at five and three quarters down to the second score line, eight and five eighths of an inch down to the second score line, and then 11 and a half all the way down. Okay? Now, also, what you want to do on my scoreboard, I've got these little black markers here, and this indicates three inches, six inches, and nine inches. So you want to basically put a little marker at the same score lines that we just done here apart from that one actually because that goes all the way down but these three score lines that we just done we need to put a little marker at the same so at two and seven eighths of an inch I know that that's the little bit here just before this black um, marker so you just want to put a little kind of like mark in your card then you want to do another one at the five and three quarters so again there's my six inch mark if I just come down two then I know that that's where that one is and then this one is the eight and five eighths of an inch mark and I just need to come down three okay now if you don't have your scoreboard like that or you're not even using the scoreboard just with your ruler just line it up on your scoreboard here at the two and seven eighths of an inch one and then just go all the way down and put a little mark there okay like I said, two and seven eighths of an inch, five and three quarters, and eight and five eighths of an inch. Okay, then get rid of our scoreboard. And then with your metal ruler, so what you want to do now is rotate your card so you've got these square pieces at the bottom. And we're going to create these crosses now that I've done. And to do that, if you start from the, so here we've now got that tab on our left hand side. Okay, and we've got two squares. Come up to the two squares and the left hand side of the top of that square, so the top left hand side, okay, just here, we're going to score from there across to that little mark that you would have made in your card. Okay, so I'm going to go over mine again. I'm going to use the smaller end of my stylus and just really embed those score lines, okay? Then you want to go to the top right of that square and go up to the top here where that half inch score line is okay so again like so okay I'll put a little template on my blog as well for this then you're going to go from that same mark that we've just done this score line and we're going to go across to that next little marker on our card now remember every mark is above 
these three lines here. Okay, if I hold it like that, you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, so like I said, we're going from here across the score and then to the top of the next square. So you always go the left and then the right. So we're going to go from the right across up to that one there. So now we've done this cross and this cross and then you just want to repeat that with the other two there. Now you can also just go from the top left of every square and go across and do all of your kind of left to right score lines. So that one, that one, that one and that one and then just move your ruler that way and then go from the top right of every square and again go across so it's entirely up to you how you want to do it but basically you want to have one two three four five six seven eight squares at the bottom and then one two three four big crosses and then your half inch score line okay you can really see the lines there on that black card so hopefully that has all made sense for you Okay, so now what you need, I'm going to bring back in my scoreboard to go through the measurements of all the pattern paper. So you need, let's grab these. So these are the two and five, yeah. So these are two and five eighths. Just check they are the right size. Yeah, they are. So two and five eighths of an inch squared. You want four pieces, and these are going to be to decorate the four sides of the bottom square okay then you want four pieces of two and a half by two and five eighths so slightly just not squared okay two and a half by two and five eighths and you want four pieces and these are going to make actually you need eight pieces because they are going to make our triangles here and I've just realized I've done mine all the same when actually I want different here. So I'm gonna cut some different card in a minute for that one. So yes, basically you want eight pieces, like so. And then if you wanna do these different, like I have, because I quite like that contrast, although I've already cut these, I'm gonna cut them into my other squares, but you'll need four pieces of two and a half by six, okay? And that's gonna make our big diamonds. Now, if you have ever have paper packs and you don't have matching embellishments and things like that to go with them, you can just fussy cut. So all I've done here is fussy cut some of the um, paper to give me these. And that's what I'm gonna to use to make this nice little piece on the top. So that's all I did there is I fussy cut them from this paper. Okay, so it's just a nice um, way there to, to make embellishments, um, decorations and stuff. Then for the handle, you need one piece of eight and a half by half an inch. Okay, to be honest, if you want to make it longer, you can. You might not even want to put a handle on. It's entirely up to you, but that's what you need there. Then what we're going to do, so our pieces that are square, so our two and five eighths square, they just stay as they are. These slightly off squared shaped ones, so the two and a half by two and five eighths, what you want to do is along the, move my ruler out of the way, um, scoreboard, sorry. So let me just grab my ruler here. So along the two and a half inch side, we need to, on one side, so I'm gonna just flip it over, grab my pencil, so along the two and a half inch side, you just want to mark at one and a quarter, okay, like so. Then I'm going to bring in my trimmer, and what we're going to do is we're going to cut from that middle little pencil mark down to each corner to create a triangle. So I'm just lining it up in my cutter here, my guillotine, and just cut it like so. And then I can go in the other side there, making sure my points are all lined up. And then I've got one of my triangles. Just get rid of that. Now you can go and cut each one like that if you want, but what I find is, is quicker really, is line up along the two and a half inch side. And you can kind of choose the way you want your pattern here. So yeah, line up the bottom two and a half with the two and a half, because you want the height of the two and the five eighths. 
and then just trace it with your scissors. So just cut right along that line. It's just a bit quicker than having to get the pencil and mark each one. But as long as you're lining it up along the two and a half inch bottom bit here, you'll get your little triangles much, much quicker. And that one there. I need to cut some more of these because you will have eight of these, remember. Like so. Okay, so you will have eight. I'm going to cut some more of them in a minute. Okay, so I've just gone ahead and finished them. So I've now got my eight triangles there. I've got those four squares. And then I've just gone and cut these again in a contrasting. So I've actually done the same from the scrap that I had there because I do like that polka dot. So what you want to do with these is along the bottom shortest side. Well, actually, you want to do it on all four sides, but you just need to mark the halfway mark. Again, you only need to do this on one. So you've got two and a half, so you need to do one and a quarter and one and a quarter. Do this on the other side, not on the printed side, but it's okay, I can rub it out. And then along the six inch side, you're just gonna mark at three inches. So there, and there, okay. And then again, with my cutter, which I need to clean. For some reason I've got a load of glue underneath it. I need to take that off. And then again, you're just gonna cut from point to point. So I'm just lining up the pencil there and the middle there all on the edge of my blade or you can draw a line with your pencil and join them up and then just cut it freehand it's entirely up to you but like I said I only do this once and then I use the, the one I've cut to just trace like I did before I just do find that's a bit quicker plus you tend to get it a bit more consistent as well so there we go so I've got one of my diamonds there so then I will just grab the other one sit it over the top get it bang on like so and a little bit over there there we go just make sure you hold it really tight between your finger and your thumb and just move it around there you see what I'm doing so just go over all of those four pieces or three now that you'll have left and just get those diamonds cut out Okay, so that's those four now all ready to go. So you should have four big diamonds, you should have eight triangles, and you should have four squares. Okay, then bring in your main card again, and now what we want to do is burnish our score lines. So, first of all, I'm just going to burnish the main ones there, and then that half inch one, and then you can just pinch those ones in up to that score line, like so. Again, this is the Do Crafts Colossal paper pack that I like using, so this is a really nice card. Then for these ones, if you just flip it over and basically just go along, I like to do all the same first and then rotate it and just lift up the card each time so it's joining the tops of these squares nicely. That one can go right over. So now we've got them all burnished, you can really see it taking shape. So now what we want to do is stick all of these down. So I find it easier to do when it's all nice and flat, but there's a couple that you don't want to stick down until you have put it all together. And that's the, the very, so basically you will have one here, one here, one here. This one is going to be obviously half on this side and half on this piece. So that one you will stick down last. Um, and that's it, everything else actually you can stick down. So then these are all going to go like so, and you should have a nice border made sure it's about a nice little like just under a quarter of an inch. It's going to go like so, and then these ones will go like that, and then our base is these ones here. We'll cut it all. Um, in a minute as well. So make sure you keep it right in those squares and then the handle of it gone last. So actually the only one you don't need to stick down is that one. So I'm going to go get those all stuck down. I'm going to use my wet glue um, but you can obviously use your tear tape. But just make sure you're not using a heavy water-based um, 
glue because you don't want it to warp especially with a faceted style like this it would just end up looking a bit a bit odd so I'm just using my wet glue okay so they're all stuck down and as I was doing it I was thinking do you know what? this is too long it's, it's going too narrow at the top and then I measured this and it's not six at all <laughs> it's actually five and well yeah five and a quarter yeah five and a quarter so I will edit that into this video. You don't want it to be two and a half by six. You want it to be two and a half by five and a quarter. Yeah, definitely. Okay, um, and you'll get that. See, it's like all the same at the top there. I've got that nice purple. But as you look at my black, it's gone a bit, me being picky, but I would go with the five and a quarter. Okay, so anyway, that's all stuck down now. So if I just lift that up, you can see, and it's really gonna come together now. So what we wanna do is just a few cut lines. So along the bottom four here, you wanna cut up this tab and just take a little wedge out there and then do a little wedge on the top there. Okay, and then go up each of these, each time removing the score line either side. Um, it will just make the bottom of your gift box or gift bag much, much neater. Okay, so now we've done that and you should have those four cut like so. Then along this side I'm going to add some of my red tape. I'm not going to use my um, wet glue, I'm going to use this instead. And you just want to run some glue or your tape along here. Make sure you hug the score line side more than anything. You see there my tape doesn't completely cover it all but it doesn't matter as long as it's more on the uh, score line side it's fine and then just gonna peel the backing off and flip it over now this one you can't just fold in half because obviously the design so you need to hold it and what I would say is with the squares at the bottom here and the score lines line that up first to so get those squares nice and married together with the base like so I'm just going to go in and squeeze them down. So you can see there I've got that all nice and even. And then this one here, you can then just make sure the top is all nice and lined up. And then the rest should just all meet together like so. Okay. And then that last one is now going to stick in like that. So I'm just going to get that one stuck in. Okay, so that's now stuck in and it also covers up that score line which is really good. Okay, so it almost looks like when people look at it they'll be like, how have you put that together because I can't actually see any joins. So now you've got the base, so because I know that that is where it was joined, that's going to be the back. So this is my front. So this will be the last one to go down. So I'm just going to pop my back one up first. And I'm just going to run some glue around there. Then I'm going to pop one of the sides down, and again, and then that other side. And you can see I've got nothing overhanging because we took off all that bulk. And then the last one, so this has got three layers to the base, it's really reinforced it and made it very strong. So again, you could definitely put something heavier in this a miniature wine bottle would probably fit certainly heavy candles um, all, all kinds of heavy things <laughs> and then that last one just perfectly sits over the bottom there you can see flip it over I'm just going to pop my ruler in there just to make sure it's all nicely secure and then what we want to do okay so when you, if you fold it out like this, okay, and basically you want to pinch it in half on the sides, just so it lies nice and flat, just pinch it, okay, like so. Then open it up again, and now those ones that you've pinched, just fold back in again, and just line up your score lines like so and again just push that one back in like so okay so now we've also got nice DSP inside there which I think is a nice touch 
and yeah there's the closure so it's really easy it's the easiest way to do it you can add more score lines at the beginning if you want but you don't really need to it's very quick to just fold it flat now one thing I didn't mention is you also need a piece of two by one and you want to score along the two inch side at one inch I'm just going to fold this over and this is going to be my little fastening so if you don't want a handle I mean I'm having both but you could just have that on like so so what I'm going to do is stick it down first and then I'm going to build up my flowers on top just so I can kind of see how they look. So I've put glue on one half, put the piece that's got no glue on, on the front. Is that the front or is that the back? I can't actually remember now, no, that's the, that's the front for me, so that way, yeah. And just pop it on the back there so the score line meets the top of the card. Make sure it's all in the middle squeeze it together and fold that over like so and just make sure that that is sitting in the center okay and then on that front piece i've got some of my velcro here so i'm just going to take a pair got so many i should organize these a bit better but like so that on the inside and again fold that over like so okay and then with my flowers and I'll add the handle in a minute but basically I'm going to stick the large one right over the top I think and then have these ones kind of stuck yeah so let's have I'm using some foam um, adhesive here as well just to kind of lift them a little bit like so and then these kind of yeah I'm gonna have these leaves just kind of nestled underneath okay so you've got an instant embellishment there which matches perfectly and then that's gonna stick but before I stick that down actually I'm gonna put my handle on so this is the handle Put your thing, finger and thumb on each end so your thumbs are facing up and just bring it round towards you, keeping your thumbs facing up the right way. Okay, and then that's how you put a handle on. So it's up to you which way you want it to be. So let's do like so. So I think I'm going to flip it actually because it was that way. Yeah, so it would be like that. Okay, so I'm going to hold it together like so and just put little bit of glue on each side and just stick one, one okay hold that there for a second okay and there's the back it's much neater now because I haven't got that that white piece there from what I'd done before so that's how the back will look that's the front absolutely love this and then I'm just gonna add some glue on my square and then just position my flower and there's the box so if I just lift that up now you can see you've got a really nice open it up huge huge box there to fill with treats and I just really really like this style I think it's lovely and then that folds down and you can hold it obviously with the handle the handle's more decorative more than anything so there's something very heavy in there I mean it shouldn't come off at all but yeah I wouldn't put too much pressure on the handle but there you have it lovely lovely so there's the two so I hope you've enjoyed this faceted handbag tutorial from me today. As always, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.